now that we verified uh, the stock run, everything looks good. Yeah. We're good to go. And now the fun part begins. Installing parts. Installing parts. Yeah. So we start off with the intake. The intake which is uh, ISV. Thank you, Henry from Western Motorsports for providing us with a set of intake system for Ryan. This is basically a heat shielded open port air intake system. It comes with an air filter, a lot of pipe, and also the heat shield covers. Right, this would be better than the original intake box, giving you more MS. Absolutely. Yeah. What are the benefits of an upgraded intake system? And we get this question a lot. Basically, the reason why is it provides for cooler yeah, intake. More cold air means that there's more O2 density. Yes, right? that more will help O2 molecule, yeah, density. molecule density that will help with combustion as well. Correct. So the faster the combustion, the more power you make. Correct. So the more O2 molecules you have in your intake air, in your air fuel mixture, the more efficient and more powerful the combustion is. Correct. So this is where RSV, RSV came up with this. Namely, heat shield yeah. to protect the intake from the hot air surrounding the air filter. This ensures the coolest possible intake air temperature and less stress on the intercooler. Do we need extra modifications to upgrade the intake? No, you don't. No, don't. In fact, you don't. Yeah. It depends though, it depends though. So it depends on the type, on, yeah. on, on what car you Certain you're cars, yeah. Correct. Like the A45, I would Correct. Like, it yeah. comes with a 2.7 inch inlet hose, which is a little bit too restrictive to our liking. Yes. Hence, uh, we have actually a CNC inlet tube, yeah. right? That's four inch. That drastically improves the airflow and you can right away feel the increment of power. Yeah, so, but however, you do not need to specifically tune your car to an intake as long as the, the sensors are still in place and are not falsified. Let's say where the housing of the MAF sensor, if your car has any, is, is located, the diameter must not change because it's calibrated to, to measure the air flowing through that very diameter. Right. And then only the ECU gets proper signals. So if your intake, however, employs the same mass airflow sensor, but a larger tubing, then the sensor gets wrong readings and your car will run lean because it thinks it ingests less air. And in the end, it's more, but the ECU will not know. So you will run way too lean and then that's dangerous to your engine. But on usual applications on normal cars, even a stock car can benefit from a well-made intake. People ask us if they upgrade their intakes, will something change? Will they have better response? Will they have better power? Will they have better fuel efficiency? Yeah. Basically, the answer is marginal. Marginal, yeah. Marginal. In the end, when you, I mean, at high RPM, the ingestion is a little bit easier. The turbo can flow a little easier. You might make six to 10 horsepower more. But that if is, you're lucky. If you're lucky, but yeah. it's, it's hardly noticeable. Yeah. It's hardly noticeable. Yeah. Sensor's still in place, so the ECU runs the, its parameters and its set points, so there's no change in, in, in consumption. There's also no change in ignition timing in that sense. It will, however, because the ECU has, uh, depending on which ECU, has several timing maps. It will be able to run on the more efficient timing maps rather than on the bad quality or hot temperature timing maps. So it will maintain more power if it ingests more and cooler air, that's for sure. Throttle response per se, no, but turbo spooling can be improved. Yes, in the general term, it's just like, if, you are, if your intake system is able to ingest more air, more MS, you make the power. That's correct, yeah. that's correct. But it really, it really plays a, uh, a good part when you tune. Mm. Then you want as much air as you can, because we alter the, the settings away from stock, and we want it to ingest as much air as possible. So if we can get more, we'll happily take it. Yeah. You want to talk about the downpipe? Of course. Okay, so here we have a three-inch catless downpipe made with our partners from Secret Flow and branded Project A. So it's, of course, proven to work very, Project very well. Project A certified. Well. Project A certified. Yeah. So as it says, it removes the factory catalyst. The catalyst is, of course, a vital component to emissions. And as such, it also presents a bottleneck because it filters the exhaust gases and restricts the flow of the gas leaving the engine. So in this case, upgrading to a catless downpipe helps with gas exchange and of course heat dissipation. Usually in, in regular expectations, when you just drop in a catless downpipe, you already will see your boost going up a little bit because there's less back pressure on the turbo making it easier for the turbo to, to exhale in that sense. Generally said, this is actually something that even increases uh, the longevity of your turbo. The stress, the thermal stress is less, and so is the mechanical stress in the end. With the straightfold downpipe, we will have lower EGTs, which yes. is exhaust gas temperature. We have downpipes for various 
various applications. Yeah, various applications. Like um, this is for the F30. We have for the G20s. We have for the A45s. Uh, even the W177 A45s, the A35s. Yeah, but generally we made this. Taylor made this with Secret Flow to provide us with the downpipe. It's a vital ingredient for any stage two upgrade. If you want to run 0.1 bar more than on stage one, you need a uh, downpipe. You need a better flowing exhaust to complement the mechanical parts. So it, actually, it, it helps extend your engine's lifetime rather than shorten it. So it's a very, very important part. So there you go. This is our main ingredient for our stage two conversion. So what we're going to do now is to install all the things into Ryan's car. And I'll hand the tuning part to Michael. So now that we got the ECU out, I'll be handing it over to my boys to do the benching, which means we extract the original software from this baby. And I'll be going up to get ready for it. Now that the file is benched, my boys uploaded a file to our server, so I have access to it right here. I open up it up in my program called WinOLS, which is the number one editor for anybody out here who does my trade. Right now, I'm looking at parameters with special regards to being safe right now because this is my base file for this car. So whenever I do a base file, it's not a one-shot solution. I start with something that is moderate, that basically is safe, then we go on a log run and see how the car reacts to it and see where there's leeway and uh, yeah, more room to make a little more. So my base file is pretty much complete. All I'm touching up right now are the Lambda settings, making sure that the engine gets good air fuel ratio and uh, also proper cooling. Because if you run Lambda 1, for example, quick explanation, Lambda 1 would mean that you have 50% fuel, 50% air in the mixture, and both react fully with no residue. If you go lower than 1, 0.8 something and so on, it means that you have 20%. 0.8 would mean you have 20% overlap, so you have uncompensated busted fuel. Generally said on NA cars, Lambda 086 is the most efficient one that generates best power. On turbocharged applications, however, I like to go safe with uh, Lambda 082. Also, all the excess fuel inside the combustion chamber provides for cooling as well. So fossil fuel has this trait that if you run a little richer, it will make your combustion, your, um, your whole process cooler. And that's something that we definitely want. So this is my final touch up here on his Lambda maps. And then I will upload my final file. Also, I'm going to program a little bit of ignition timing. Uh, like I said, taking into consideration that we have uh, run 97. So I'm gonna advance timing by one degree first, not too much, to see how the car responds to it, how the engine responds to it, and how it deals with it. So that's what I'm doing, a little bit of ignition timing, Fueling, of course, boost, torque limiters, speed limiters, and uh, yeah, that in simple terms, and a little bit of a purple, a little bit, not too much. So to make it a, a little bit sporty, since we're gonna make this a, a very sporty build. So now that I'm done with this file, um, with the base file, I will upload it back to the server, a signal to my boys that it's ready for flashing. They will apply the file, they will flash it to the ECU, reinstall the ECU, and perform the first log run. And then when the results are back in, I will carefully review it. And um, according to the live data, I can make a V2. And then slowly, slowly, approximate a level until I'm happy and say, boost is perfect, lambda is following, everything is right, throttle stays open. So these things are my next few steps until I can call it a day. We received the file from Michael and we are ready to flash this car. And it's done. So next, we're gonna give this car a transmission tune. Let's hop on. So we're giving this car um, XHP Stage 2 transmission tuning. Right, these are the function, various functions and features that comes with the Stage 2 tune. Top limiter, removal, increase line pressure, and uh, like there's no downshift when you floor the pedal. It doesn't kick down. And faster shifting as well. So we're gonna flash. The process takes about 
two minutes or less, and it's done. It's how easy to actually use XHP to flash the transmission of a BMW. So we are done with the stage two tune, the XHP tune. Now it's time to lock the car. Let's go. So we just finished the log run and uh, let's see what Michael has to say about this. Yeah, I mean the log looks pretty good. The boost is super clean. Up mm -hmm. top is perfect. I mean 1.4 bar, this is what we want. Lambda is good. 0 Lambda is good. 2, 8, 1. Yeah, no retard. It's expected. I think we can wrap it up. I think it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we're making okay. around 280 horsepower to 470 Nm. Around yeah. there, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. should be. Should be. With yeah. the mods, yeah, definitely. Great. So next we're gonna fit this car with 19 inch rims brand new tyres, a set of new coilovers, as well as a six-spot brake system, which will make this car fantastic to drive, better than handling. So if you like our video so far, remember to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and you can watch the next episode here.